Welcome everyone, my name is Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Y with only Dragon-type Pokemon. The full rules for this run are listed down below, but put simply, only the first Dragon-type encounter in each route or area can be caught. If a Pokemon fades, it must be permanently boxed. No items except held items in battle. Party Pokemon levels are limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace. And finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. The Dragon Type, one of the most singularly powerful types of all time. There's no debating, but there's a big problem. In the main series games, Dragon Types are infamous for being incredibly rare and hard to find. When it comes to hardcore Nuzlocke, that causes a big problem as encounters are the name of the game. But today, we're gonna take on the game with perhaps the most legitimate dragon encounters available, Pokemon Y. I mean, just take a look at this. A stellar lineup of heavy hitters and really cool and unique Pokemon to work with overall. Although, a few of them do appear in the same location as each other, so we'll have to see what we get. And of course, since we don't play with legendaries, Zygarde will be unobtainable. I have no doubt that a run like this is possible, but I think I want to aim for our third ever deathless hardcore Nuzlocke. Can we do it though? Only time will tell. But there are some big challenges I can spot from a mile away. And if you're looking for a challenge of your own, check out today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. A free-to-play game for both mobile and PC which you can download using my QR code or links below. Badass champions, tough bosses, millions of players, and regular updates? You bet, Raid has it all. Speaking of updates, how about the most recognizable face of Raid, Death Knight, the underdog champion getting an unparalleled upgrade in the form of Ultimate Death Knight, a legendary hero, who every single player can get for free just by logging in and playing for 7 days between now and October 27th. Use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level your new strongest champion all the way to level 50 and 5 star ascension. And how about an amazing Halloween promotion where you can get a bunch of real life and in-game prizes including $1,000 Amazon gift cards and some of the best epic and legendary Halloween champions in Raid for free. All you need is your Raid player ID. Just download Raid with my link and then head to trickortreat.plarium.com. Enter your details and spin the wheel to get your prize. This event only runs until November 5th, so be quick. All new players, use my link or scan the QR code to get a free champion, Virgies, and also this cool in-game loot too. Alright Pokemon Y, let's see what you've got. Okay, is this just me, or is this whole door location reminiscent of the World Between Worlds from Star Wars? Like, where the hell are we? Oh god, where are you taking me? Oh, no, 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 anywhere but here, please! Well, it turns out our friends are kind of debating what our name should be, and I'm gonna go... Call me King. Why, thank you, Shauna. I agree. Now, we do have a bit of a problem here in that our first dragon encounter is not available until later on in Connecting Cave. So, using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, I've adjusted our starters so that we can get the first encounter we would get, Aksu. I name our Aksu Yoshi, and yes, it might seem really fitting on the face of it, but all of our Pokemon nicknames are going to be based on our top contributors to the channel of all time. So, shout out to you guys. Yoshi ends up having a mild nature which gives plus special attack and minus defense, which isn't the greatest as Haxorus is normal a physical attacker. However, he does have the rivalry ability which can be really good or bad depending on the gender of the Pokemon that we face because the same gender gives us plus 25% attack and for the opposite gender, minus 25. And wouldn't you know it, the first rival we have to face is of course Shauna and she has a female Pokemon. So we're only operating at 75% damage against a chest spin and despite Aksu being a very powerful unevolved Pokemon, it doesn't fare very well as in the end we're left with just 5 HP remaining. We were just one attack away from losing our very first battle. Alright, this Rhyhorn is made a lot less intimidating by the ridiculous angles it has to walk to get to you. With that, we're off on our adventure, and let's go see what kind of Pokemon lie in the vast Kalos region. Alright, no, I, I've seen enough. I'm out of here. After getting some Pokeballs from Serena, our run has officially begun. And I reluctantly continue my journey through the Kalos region. Saying that you Will you shut up? up hey. Shut the hell up. Your Pokemon are in for a shock. Huh, <laughs> I see what you did there. All kidding aside, the Dragon type is actually really good early on, resisting a lot of common types. The way Pokemon move, it's just incredible. I want to show off some of that spirit when I dance. Tierno, could you think about something besides how Pokemon move for once? The f*** you say to me, you little s***! 
We quickly arrive in Santa Luna City, the location of the first gym, and also a mighty fine dating spot, might I add. But, I mean, come on, we're trying to be a Pokemon master here, so no Tinder for us. Let's hit up the first gym. This gym is a Bug-type one, a neutral one against us, and having learned Assurance, we at least have more power than damn Scratch offers, so most of the battles go smoothly with a few close calls here and there since we just don't have that much damage output at the moment. Now, during this challenge, I realized it's very rare to find attack EVs here, but thankfully we can go forward to Route 22, which is east of Santaloon, to find Farfetch'd, which do give attack EVs. After some training, it's time for the first gym leader, Viola. I'm not gonna lie, her team looks terrifying for us, especially since both of them are female, Pokemon, which means we do less damage, and her Vivalon is super bulky. With that said, we had a saving grace at level 10 as we learned Dragon Rage, which does 40 HP damage no matter what, so naturally her Surskit being such low level, it gets taken down in one hit. Amazing. In comes her Vivalon next, and it gets off a tackle before we land a Dragon Rage, but it barely doesn't take it out in the red, but she makes the mistake of using a potion, which means she's now in range of another. That was much more solid than I thought it would be. For leveling up, we also get an amazing stab move, Dual Chop, which is basically an 80 power Dragon move. First badge acquired. Before moving on, we can get an amazing item, the XP share from Viola's sister. And ideally her number two? Oh right, no dating. Hey look, it's the baby form of my channel mascot! Oh yeah, buddy, you keep... spraying. <laughs> Here we can also grab the poison barb item to boost poison moves, which I think should be great for a later encounter. After getting the return TM from... Dexio and... Ah, oh, God, what is her name? Wait a minute, who even are these people? We arrive in the massive Lumio City. Now if I'm honest, there's not a whole lot you can do here upon first arriving, so let's head to the lab. Here, the Professor of the Region challenges us to battle, the first time I think that's happened since the glitch battle with Professor Oak back in Gen 1. And because all of his Pokemon are male, we get the 25% rivalry boost on all of them, taking them all down in one hit except for Squirtle with 80 power Dual Chop. It's about time we get to see some power. For winning the battle, we get rewarded with a Mega Stone. However, because we're playing Pokemon Y, we cannot get the Charizardite X, which means no dragon encounter from this. Stars shine at night, so I won't work during the day. I'm gonna use that from now on. In one of the buildings, this girl gives us the Quick Claw, which actually came in handy a lot during our last run, so I think I might put that to use. Okay, not only does Lysander say that Diantha is straight up gonna get ugly, but is no one gonna mention the fact that she's the champion of the region? Everybody just keeps going on about how she's an actress. Anyway, Lumios does have some great secrets for us, including in the Pokemon Center where they sell TMs like the Bulldoze and Swords Dance TMs, which are fantastic, although very costly. We're gonna need to get some more money first. I... but... Wh how did you know what I was just talking about? You demon! The next few routes give us some great items, including Oran Berries, quite possibly one of the best TMs in the game for us, Hone Claws to raise our attack and accuracy, and also the Thief TM in the next town to get type boosting items off wild Pokemon. And we can multiply our berries at the berry farm up ahead. Wait a minute, Grandpa? Man, I hope I look like that when I'm a Grandpa. Oh boy, Mr. Beast be living like. No, seriously, he actually started his channel doing Pokemon Showdown videos. Oh no. Furfrau is missing? Gotcha, bitch! I've never watched fireworks with a boy before. Well, you're in for a wild ride, Missy. Knowing what kind of challenge is approaching, I make sure to teach Yoshi the Home Claws TM in preparation. That's right, we have to face a damn Snorlax of all things this early on. Not only do we get plus attack from Home Claws, but it also fixes Dual Chop's 90% accuracy. And... Man, a same type attack bonus or stab 80 power rivalry boosted Dual Chop only does that much? Sheesh. And Snorlax's special defense is much better, too. Thankfully, we pulled through, though, since he only has Lick, apparently. Ah, what a beautiful route this is. Just a gorgeous journey. Ah, I constantly feel like I'm being harassed in this game. Yay, I'm... barren. No, seriously, why is that kid, like, nine feet tall? Now, I didn't think we'd have any huge challenges at this point, but in a double battle against our rivals, Trevor came out with the Fairy-type Flabebe, which made me realize just how much of a problem these are going to be, as we can barely hurt them since they're either immune to or resist all our moves. Thankfully, this one kept attacking Serena's Pokémon instead, so we made it out alive. 
With the Kadai Gem in hand, we can grab another great item here though, the Sharp Beak, which is going to be fantastic for later encounters. Up ahead, we get to the Connecting Cave, which is where Aksu, our first encounter, would have been found. And the exit to get to Route 8 actually brings about our next encounter. Unfortunately, it's a 5% chance, so it took a while, but eventually we found it, a Bagon, which I catch and nickname Holy. Holy has a serious, neutral nature and the Rockhead ability not bad, as I think it gives it Intimidate upon fully evolving. In Ambret Town, we get what I think might be a crucial move, the Rock Smash TM. Speaking of smashing rocks... No, no, I would never. But I really do wonder why Lord Helix is sitting on a shelf of all places. After getting the Rocky Helmet from a random girl in the Gates Route 9, we get to... <clears throat> ride on a Rhyhorn. Okay, that was terrible. Cool scenery, though. The Glittering Cave brings about a couple great things for us too, including the Hardstone to boost rock moves, fantastic for our next encounter actually, and the Shadow Claw TM as well. In here we also meet Team Flare for the first time, a perfect opportunity to test Holy out, and he actually performs amazingly well despite only having Headbutt at the moment. But in a double battle up ahead, we had to deal with a Moxie Scraggy which went absolutely nuts because Serena's damn Pokemon kept getting KO'd by it, but amazingly it got confused by Water Pulse which saved us. Some of these regular trainer battles have been pretty scary so far. The end of the cave brings about our third encounter, technically, as the researcher offers us a fossil. So we grab the jaw fossil. Back in Ambret we can restore it, giving us a dragon and rock type Tyrant. Amazing. It has a lax plus defense and minus special defense nature with strong jaw too, pretty cool, and I'm really excited to use this thing. Okay, I've never noticed this before, but why are this thing's eyes different like that? I just don't understand. The beautiful Route 8 beaches lead us to Silage City where the next gym is, and there is a new encounter here, but we can't get it quite yet. Thankfully, the Silage gym actually allows you to skip all of the trainers as we were getting quite close to the level cap. The next gym leader, though, is Grant, the Rock-type specialist, but he has a Dragon and an Ice-type Pokémon. Uh-oh. Not only that, but his Amora has the Refrigerate ability, which means Takedown becomes a Stab 90 power Ice move, which would one hit KO our entire team. I had done crazy speed and attack EV training earlier for this reason. Let's see what we can do. Now, Serebii had told me that Tyrant was first up, so I came up with an incredibly elaborate Stealth Rock, and then Charm, and then Switch Plan, avoiding the Rock Tomb speed drop, but apparently we don't need it, as Amora comes in first. Oh god, why? I panicked here, but I realized I could use Charm to lower his attack, and then he went for Thunder Wave of all things. Weird. He then uses Aurora Beam though, a special move that I forgot he had because I was so focused on takedown, and we survive on just 3 HP before our berry, then land a 4 times super effective rock smash, but it barely doesn't KO. Oh no. Knowing he'll potion though, I switch into Yoshi here and hit another rock smash since we outspeed, and because of the defense drop from Rev, we got the job done, which would have been a range otherwise. Goodness gracious. In comes Tyrant next, and amazingly super effective stab dual chop outspeeds and takes him down thanks to rivalry. Without Rock Smash, I don't think that battle was possible. We also get the Rock Tomb TM for winning, a well-deserved prize for Rev. Our next destination is Geosenge Town, and despite it having no gym, we do have another massive challenge here. Before that, we can grab the Payback TM, which doubles in power if the user moves last, and also the Soft Sand item to boost ground move power. In preparation for the big challenge, I level up Holy to level 30 so that he evolves into a Shellgon, our first evolution. Thankfully, the level cap allows some room for this. I also bought the Bulldoze and Swords Dance TMs now that we have enough money. What's this big challenge, you might ask? Well, it's Corinna, who we have to battle well before her gym battle, and she has two Lucarios of all things. I lead with Rev here and go for Charm off the bat, but she hit a power-up punch. Thankfully, Charm lowers attack by 2, whereas power-up punch only raises them by 1, but then she uses Swords Dance. Sheesh. This is a great way to lower her attack here, and her Aura Berry helps a bit, but we have to switch. I send out Yoshi now, and power-up punch isn't doing much with lowered attack. Now I can hit a Rivalry Rock Smash, which does just less than half. I now go for Hone Claws since she just used Metal Sound, and now with that attack boost we can get the range to take it down after being brought below half before our berry. In comes her second Lucario, and here I switch into our best defensive Pokemon, Holy, with the Rocky Helmet attached for some extra recoil damage. It's a back and forth slugfest here, but Holy's attack is quite great and we take her down in two Rock Smashes. Better than I thought that might be, as Charm helped a lot. Route 11 up ahead finally grants us some Citrus Berries too. 
Up next is Reflection Cave, quite a beautiful place, but what's not beautiful is having to face things like Intimidate Fairy-type Granbull of all things. I can't get over how many threats there are against dragons this early on, I was not expecting that. After picking up the Black Belt and Earth Plate items down here, exiting the cave lands us in Shallower City where the next gym is. I spent forever encountering a whole bunch of Pokemon so that we could reach the 40 Pokedex target so we can get a fantastic item, the Eviolite, to boost defenses on unevolved Pokemon which we have a lot of. The Pokemon Center here also has some great TMs like Poison Jab and Dig for Sale, which should definitely come in handy. With that, the Tower of Mastery lies ahead, quite an impressive place on the 3DS, and here we have a rival battle with Serena, but I think I have a good plan. She leaves with a Meow Stick, so I send out Rev. With Strong Jaw and Super Effective Bite, we hit her low, but Fairy-type Disarming Voice hits us twice to just 6 HP before our Berry activates, and then we could take her down. Close one. In comes Absol next, and I have to switch, so I send in Yoshi. Thankfully, she had gone for quick attack first since we were so low. Then Bite brings us below half, but we flinch. Are you kidding me? Not being able to Home Claws, I hope to hold on, and we do on just 5 HP, but Dragon Claw only brings her into the red. However, here I realize I can switch in Holy and get the Rocky Helmet recoil to take her down. Nice. From there, Frogadier can't do much on us, but did confuse us at one point, but we made it through for the KO in two attacks. With that, it's time for the Shallower City Gym, quite an annoying one having to chase down all the damn trainers, but Yoshi with the Eviolite performs quite well with the rivalry boost. While getting to the level cap, we also learn a crucial move as he learns Dragon Dance right at the cap, which I replace Home Claws with since we no longer need the accuracy boost with Dragon Claw versus Dual Chop. Let's go! The third gym leader is Corinna, the fighting type specialist, and her team is quite damn terrifying with its bulk and power. She leads with a Mianfu though, so I lead with Yoshi. I get two Dragon Dances off before her Mianfu is getting a little bit too scary with the power up punch, so a Dragon Claw takes her down. In comes Halucha next, and this is why I knew we needed two Dragon Dances to outspeed. She is a female Pokemon though, so Dragon Claw doesn't even take her down from there, and then she goes for Power Up Punch thankfully, so another can take her down before she sweeps her entire team. Her final Pokemon is Machoke, and it's a ranged to KO here, so I don't risk it and switch into Holy instead. Rock Tomb drops our speed, and then she uses Leer, but I can Home Claws and let it get Rocky Helmet damage before hitting it to the red with Return. She then heals twice in a row and just went for Leer again, so a final return does the job and wins us our third badge. We also get the Power Up Punch TM, which is a stellar one. At the top of the Tower of Mastery, we also get awarded with the Mega Bracelet. And believe it or not, this might be a lifesaver. Alright, it's time to search for a new encounter on Route 12. I... <clears throat> okay, there's no way this doesn't resemble that one image online. You know the one. Now, we do have some honey, so we could use it to trigger Horde Battles, which is the only way to find our next encounter, a Mareep. Yes, a Mareep. I catch one and nickname him Ethan, and he ends up having a lonely plus attack and minus defense nature. Not great. We won't be able to use this thing until it gets the dragon type later on via a certain method, so we'll wait for that one. Ah, this is what life should be all about. Goat simulators. Getting the Surf HM from our old pal Serena allows us to make our way to the other side of the route where we can get a wicked item, the Leftovers. Okay, let's just make it past here. Come Come on, why can't I move? Oh, come on. Pure nonsense. I got stuck on an invisible... Oh, oh, okay, this is fine. On one of the islands comes a crucial item, the Amphrosite. That's right, we now have a way to Mega Evolve Mareep when it finally evolves, which technically grants us a dragon type only when it's Mega Evolved. This should be exciting. It's a first for us. Here we can also grab the x TM, which should be great for Yoshi's later evolution. After some leveling up, we finally have Ethan evolve all the way into an Ampharos, meaning it's now usable only in its mega form, making it part dragon. Kumarine City is upon us, where we can not only grab the Silk Scarf to boost normal moves, but also get the Acrobatics TM from a random quiz that some girl gives us. First time I think I've gotten that here, as it's a random TM that she gives you, so I'm happy. We can also grab an item that will be key for a couple encounters, the Good Rod. However, none of those encounters can get the dragon type yet, so we'll wait for now. Before the next gym, we can actually head south to Route 13, which is open to us, and here we run into, or rather get ran into, by a Gibble. Amazing. Trap Inch is more common here, but I'm thrilled to get Gibble this time around. After grabbing the Charge Beam TM, which is great for Ampharos, since it doesn't really get that many electric moves early on, we can check out Gibble's stats in the PC. 
I named him Samurai, and Samurai has a brave plus attack and minus speed nature. Half amazing, half terrible. With the level cap so high, we can immediately evolve him into a Gabite, which I also teach the Dig TM to, making him a powerhouse already. Sorry I'm late, so could you show me Mega Evolution? Why yes, of course. It's time. I leave with Ampharos and immediately Mega Evolve it. She did get up light screen unfortunately, but Charge Beam has a chance to raise our special attack every turn. We eat up super effective disarming voice with our sheer bulk, but eventually she confuses us. We make it through for the KO, even through the light screen though, and next is Absol. And after a quick attack, we make it through for another Charge Beam which does just over half. Slash hits us low, then we hit ourselves in confusion unfortunately. Without confusion, this would have been a slaughter even through light screen, but we have to switch. So I go into Samurai who tanks a slash crit with just about half, then survives quick attack and takes her down with Dragon Claw. Her final Pokemon is Frogadier and Holy dukes it out with her to the end, being brought to about a quarter in the process. Before the next gym, I teach Yoshi the Poison Jab TM as it will definitely come in handy here. The Kumarine Gym is a really cool designed one and with the Eviolite attached, Yoshi decimates the trainers quite well with Poison Jab. The fourth gym leader is Ramos, and honestly, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. He leads with a jump luff, which I've learned to never underestimate, but I send out Rev. We resist acrobatics, so a single hardstone boosted rock tomb decimates it in one hit. A great start. In comes Goko next, so I use Charm to lower his attack after he misses takedown, which we resist anyway. He then hits us hard with Grass Knot to a quarter, and we get another Charm to bring him to minus four attack. This gives us the perfect opportunity to switch into Yoshi with him hardly being able to touch us, and two poison jabs take him down with the rivalry boost. His final Pokemon is then Weepin Bell, and to add insult to injury, we got a crit with Dragon Claw to end the battle. Ah, that was much smoother. Our team's starting to develop for sure. In the Kalos power plant, we- Oh, oh no. Did you get stuck, Step- Okay, you know what, we're not even gonna go there. Against the infinite Team Flare battles, Rev does amazing as he has stab super effectiveness against all their fire and flying types, and also four times resists the admin's Houndoom too. He was made for this. Circling back to Lumios, the next gym, aka the f***ing Eiffel Tower, is finally open. As one might have expected, Samurai is a hero here with Dig, tearing through almost all the trainers with relative ease. The fifth gym leader himself is Clement, the electric type specialist, and I think we have a pretty solid strategy against him. He leads with an Emolga, which is immune to ground of course, however we can tank Aerial Ace well with the Eviolite attached and then smash him in two hits with Dragon Claw for the KO. From there his Magneton Sturdy helps against me being too over eager with Dig, but then I actually use my brain and Dragon Claw after he heals, that way we can then take him down with our next 4 times effective attack. His final Pokemon is Heliolisk and it merely hits us with quick attack before Dig eviscerates it. What a beast you are, Samurai! Five badges. For winning, we also get the Thunderbolt TM, perfect for Ethan the Ampharos. Hey, would you look at that? We weren't wrong about us being a king. Even Lysander gave us a rock back. <laughs> did you girls see that? Uh, wait, what? With the other part of Lumios now open, we can grab one of the undisputed best items in the game, the Expert Bell for the bonus super effective damage. With me actually remembering the challenge up ahead this time, I also spent some time training up our team, during which Yoshi evolves into a wicked looking fracture, and Rev also ends up fully evolving into a monstrous Tyrantrum, probably one of the most beastly looking Pokemon out there. Hopefully these evolutions will help us out as we have another rival battle with Serena up ahead on Route 14 and her team is increasingly growing stronger. Against her Meowstic, I lead with our newly evolved Tyrantrum and after getting fake outed on the first turn, then hit by Psychic to nearly half, Expert Belt boosted, super effective, strong jaw crunch annihilates her. In comes Absol next and I decide to Dragon Claw it, but it barely doesn't KO in the red, but she just went for resisted slash so another gets the knockout. In comes a huge threat though, her now fully evolved Greninja. I have to switch, so I go into Ethan for some redemption time. After Mega Evolving, our newly acquired Thunderbolt move wipes it off the map in one hit. Much better. Route 14 is a really great looking route, but further to that, it also has our next encounter interestingly enough. This time, a Gumi, which we catch and nickname Spicy. Spicy has a rash, plus special attack, and minus special defense nature, which isn't bad. Ooh, this is the perfect place. It's October, meaning spooky season. Uh, okay, let me out, let me out. Here we can grab the Damp Rock to extend the duration of rain, and I think I have a great way to use this for a bit later on. 
With that, we arrive in La Vera City, the location of the next gym. Now, unfortunately, this is a frightening one being a fairy gym, and the trainers did cause some trouble, but ultimately we were able to make it through thanks to Yoshi's poison jab being super effective, combined with the added bulk from the Eviolite. On our way through, we have another evolution as Spicy evolves into a Sligu, which I waited until level 42 for so we could get the Dragon Pulse move by level up. It's time for the 6th gym leader, Valerie, the Fairy Specialist. Before the battle, I taught Yoshi Dig, which is going to be crucial. You see, she leads with a Mawile, but it doesn't have Intimidate, and it also doesn't have any Fairy moves, so... It's going to be our saving grace, allowing us to set up two Dragon Dances, even though she used Iron Defense, so it took two hits to take her down. From there though, with our added speed, we could outspeed Mr. Mime and take it down in one hit, and the same even went for her Sylveon too. Whew. Very glad there was a safe opening to get through that. Man oh man, it is a very special thing to be able to go through this route during the fall. It's just gorgeous. What a feeling. Oh, and added to that is the fact that we can grab the Macho Brace to double the EVs that we can get. Our next stop is Dendemil Town, and... Oh no, no, no! I may live in Canada, but this is way too early! Hmm... Uh-huh... Sure there... What do you have to say about the- Oh no no, don't try to avoid me! Here we can find the Move Reminder House, a great place to power up our team, finally being able to teach Ethan Dragon Pulse for some Dragon Stab for instance. Heading way back to Ambret Town, it's time to pick up some new encounters. Here we can use the Good Rod to fish for a Skrelp, which will get the Dragon type upon evolving. I name him Joey, and Joey has a Jolly Nature, plus speed and minus special attack, again half great but half terrible. And I mean, we've got a Psychic Gym next, so we won't use him yet. In Silage City we could do the same, this time finding a Horsey, which I nicknamed Baron, and who also has a naive plus speed and minus special defense nature, not bad, although we can't get the Dragon Scale to fully evolve him quite yet. It's time to make our way through the snowy frost cavern, and... Hey, what are you guys so nervous for? I... oh, well, thank you. I love you, big snow daddy. Riding on a mammoth swine is the way to get to the next city, and for some reason our entire party seems really uncomfortable about this. No idea why. Arrival in Anastar City allows us to get a pretty great TM, Flamethrower, from some random girl in the Pokemon Center, and with that, just outside the gym we have another battle with Serena. The majority of this battle went pretty similarly to last time with Tyrantrum taking down Meowstic, and she sent in Greninja afterward, so I took it down with Ethan and subsequently did the same for the Absol too. However, in came her Flareon next, and I had to switch, so Rev seemed like the perfect choice. She used Lava Plume, and got the burn though, but a crit saved us. That win grants us access to the Anastar Gym, and during our trip through we had Samurai evolve into a savage Garchomp, who also learned Crunch, which made the rest of the trainers quite easy. Yoshi also ended up evolving into a Haxorus at the cap, so our team is really powering up now. The seventh gym leader is Olympia, the psychic type trainer, and, well, I attached the expert belt on Samurai and taught him the Swords Dance TM2, so knowing her Sigilyph would use Reflect, I maxed out our attack, got hit by Psychic, and had our special defense lowered too, but could then sweep through her entire team with plus four super effective expert belt crunch, even powering through her bulky Pokemon like Slowking through Reflect. Now that was pretty darn cool. Shortly after the battle, we have yet another wicked evolution as Holy evolves into a monster Salamence, who also learns Fly, giving us some great Flying-type stab. Now, I went to go evolve Spicy too, but unfortunately it's not raining anywhere, and apparently using Rain Dance doesn't count. It has to be raining in the overworld for him to evolve. Guess we'll have to wait. In the Lysander Labs, we have a battle against, you guessed it, Lysander. He leads with a Mianfu, so I send out Holy for the Intimidate off the bat, then could destroy him with a fly right away after I knew he'd miss high jump kick and get recoil with us in the air. Too good, Salamis is like the perfect counter there. From there, I knew he'd send in Gyarados with Intimidate, so I switch into Ethan to tank the Outrage, and then back to Holy for the Intimidate, knowing if we Mega Evolve, we're done for. With him now confused, and with lowered attack, I know he won't go for Earthquake, so I send in Ethan again, and the plan works as he hit himself in Confusion, and then I Mega Evolve, but he snaps out of Confusion out of nowhere and goes for Earthquake, but we survive on just 13 HP before KOing with Thunderbolt. Thank goodness for those bulky EVs. In comes Murkrow next, so I switch in Haxorus, but he uses Foul Play of all things and smashed us down to just 6 HP on the Switch. Holy! Dragon Claw then destroyed him after Rocky Helmet though, and then Pyroar could be outsped with Dig for the win. 
Okay, that was way closer than expected. The excitement wasn't over yet though, as one of the Team Flare admins had a Weavile which I did not know about. Pretty much our worst nightmare, but our emergency plan worked as I switched into Salamis for the Intimidate, survived a 4 times super effective priority Ice Shard, then had Eviolite Sligu save the day with a couple Dragon Pulses. Man oh man. Oh, okay, I do not feel comfortable in this dynamic at all. Oh god, why did the lights go out? You know, playing this game again made me realize the ultimate weapon is just a terrible version of the Death Star, isn't it? In no time, we have a rematch with Lysander, with him having a much more powerful team this time around. Thankfully, despite his Mianxiao now being fully evolved, we can pull off the same strat quite brilliantly. In comes Gyarados again, and this time I went into Yoshi, who I know has high defense, and we survived Outrage in the red. Then I switch in Salamence for the Intimidate, but it still does over half, and here I go for the flyout speed so he gets confused from his lack of Outrage that turn, but we ended up getting a crit anyway to destroy him. That works too. From there, Pyro was handled by Samurai with Dig, and fortunately Honchkrow only has 52 defense stats, so Dragon Claw did enough to win us the battle. After dealing with the almighty Bacon Bird, we... Ah, look at the top of his head! <laughs> That's right, Lysander 3, this time with a threat that I don't know if we're ready for. This team is crazy, but let's give it a shot. Mian Xiao is of course easy pickings, and this time he sends in Pyroar. The one good thing here is I know he won't send in Gyarados until the end, so I could plan around that and have Yoshi take down Pyro with Dig after he just hit one Hyper Voice. Honchkrow then comes out, so I switch into Samurai, who tanks even a critical hit Night Slash with above half, so... I take the opportunity to Swords Dance, get hit down below half, but our berry helps, then Swords Dance again as he hits us to 72 HP. I know we need all the attack power we can get, as this might be the only way to handle what's next, his Mega Gyarados, which intimidated us on the Switch. Thankfully, a plus three Dragon Claw does end up being enough to take him down in one hit, saving us. Let's go. Entering Terminus Cave up ahead, we have some great items we can get, including the TM for Brick Break, but also an item we need for a key evolution, the Dragon Scale. In the next city, this generous woman also gives us the U-Turn TM too, before Professor Sycamore challenges us to battle yet again, except this time with the three fully evolved Kanto starters. But they were no match for Yoshi's insane attack power, combined with Stab Dragon Claw, smashing them all in one hit except for his Charizard, which somehow survived one. After a ton of training, we have good old Joey evolve into a Dragalge, at which point he gets the Dragon type, and I also evolve Baron into a Seedra too. In Terminus Cave, we can use a Repel Reset trick to get more ceiling encounters, which is the only way to get a new viable Pokemon, Noibat, which I catch and nickname Blake. Blake has a relaxed nature, plus defense and minus speed. Kinda bad, but we'll take it. After some leveling, Blake evolves into a Noivern, who seems to have some great IVs, and we can also give him both Boom Burst and Dragon Pulse through the Move Reminder, along with Flamethrower via TM for great coverage. Not only that, but I finally evolved Spicy into a bulky Gudra in the rain, and I can also trade evolve Baron into a Kingdra with the Dragon Scale. Now, you might notice we've done a bit of a team shakeup, and this is what I'll call our B team. I want to keep our prospective Elite 4 Pokemon safe, so these alternates are going to help a lot and have some great coverage that we're going to need right now defensively and offensively. Route 19 up ahead nets us some Yachi Berries to help with Ice Attacks, and also the Sludge Bomb TM, amazing for Dragalge. Now, the bridge rival battles are one of the main reasons for the team shakeup, as they could be quite tough with no healing between two of them. A ton of theory crafting had us perform well though, as Shauna was handled by Blake with Air Slashes on Delcaddy, Dragon Pulse on Gudra, and finally Air Slash being 4 times super effective on Chestnut too. Tierno was then handled by a switch into Baron, who outsped a Talonflame that had used Swords Dance of all things and KO'd it with Surf, duked it out with Roserade with Dragon Pulse, and then could 2-hit KO Crawdont with Dragon Pulse as well. Finally, Trevor was a tough one, but a combination of Joey with Sludge Bomb taking down Raichu, and even his incredibly bulky Fairy-type Florges too, thank god for that coverage, and then Spicy being bulky enough to finish off his Aerodactyl had us off the bridge safely. What a great team effort. Our final gym destination is upon us, Snowbell City, and, well, I'm feeling a bit scared. It's an Ice-type gym after all, but Noivern with the Expert Belt and Flamethrower performed amazingly. And Gudra's sheer bulk came in handy against those crucial scary moments, especially with Thunderbolt to handle the part Water-type Pokemon. The eighth and final gym leader is Wolfric, the Ice Specialist, and his team is straight-up dangerous. 
I theorycrafted for a while for this one and came up with one of the most ridiculous strategies ever. You might think Expert Belt Noivern with Flamethrower could do this all on his own, but Cryogonal's bulk doesn't give us the range and a 4 times damage Ice Beam would annihilate us. So, I lead with Gudra against Obama Snow, and when he sets up the Hail, I use Rain Dance to get rid of it. I then switch into Baron, our only Pokemon not weak to Ice, who tanks Ice Beam with 3 quarters. I then use Focus Energy to raise our critical hit ratio, get hit with another attack to about a third or so, then use Dragon Pulse and get the crit to KO. And with Focus Energy and the Sniper ability in the rain for more water power, we can now sweep through his entire team from there. Unbelievable. That was a wild one, but it sure worked. Our final road is Route 21, and oh, now it rains, for f sake. Here we can fish like a madman to get our next encounter at just a 5% chance with fishing encounters, and we end up finding it, a Dratini, which I catch and nickname Adam. Adam ends up having a sassy plus special defense and minus speed nature, not great, but after a ton of leveling we can evolve him into a Dragonair, and then a Mammoth Dragonite from there, who learns Outrage and Dragon Dance along the way. The Gate to Victory Road has a powerful trainer who tests you, but Adam goes absolutely berserk, tearing through all of his Pokemon after a Dragon Dance, even a Fairy-type Carbank with Aqua Tail. Unreal power. Before entering Victory Road, I make sure to scope out Route 22 for some other great items, including the Draco Plate and Spooky Plate in this weird chamber place, as well as the amazing Earthquake TM too. Now, there is a Move Tutor here who teaches Draco Meteor, and I spent a lot of time debating, but I don't really like the special attack drop you get from it, so I'm gonna pass. Entering Victory Road through the beautiful gate is always epic, but of course, the first trainer had a Weavile of all things, which we had to get Baron out there to save the day. Victory Road is where our final encounter is too, a Zvilus, which I catch in a Dusk Ball, sweet, and nicknamed Hoshi. Hoshi ends up having a modest nature. Unbelievable. Plus special attack and minus attack. Let's go. Now we had one of these before in a Gen 5 run we did, but we couldn't evolve it because it evolves so late past the level cap, but this time we can, as Hoshi evolves into a devastating beast, Hydreigon, at level 64. And I taught it Dark Pulse via TM from Route 15, and also Dragon Pulse from the Move Reminder. I'm gonna be honest, with full EVs and the Draco Plate, this thing absolutely destroys Serena's entire team in our final battle with her only being brought to just under half in the process. An absolute and utter monster. Ah yes, Max revives for winning. Thanks Serena, very useful for a Nuzlocke. Picking up the Dragon Claw TM along the final stretch, we also had Gudra save our lives from a trainer's Alakazam that was going off the rails with Dazzling Gleam outspeeding everything. Sheesh. With that, we arrive at our final destination, the Pokemon League. After tons of theory crafting, I've decided that this will be the final team we'll be taking. Basically, one pseudo-legendary dragon from each generation. Gen 2 is technically not, but shh, it should have been. After fulfilling any remaining EVs, items, etc., it's time for the Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Malva, the Fire-type expert, with a cool and slightly threatening team, although Dragon resists fire. She leads with a Pyroar, so I send out Spicy, and she hits a Noble Roar to lower our attack stats. I set up the Rain though, which is incredible for this battle, then switch into Baron, who tanks Hyper Voice with below half before our berry, and can now smash her with a Rain Boosted Surf for the KO. In comes Talonflame, which hits us hard with Brave Bird to a third, then Surf annihilates her too. Torkoal is then an easy out speed and KO as well, and in comes her final Pokemon, Chandelure. With our speed investment though, and a plus speed nature, we can outspeed and cause it to suffer the same fate, winning us the battle. Not bad at all. The second Elite Four member is Wickstrom, the Steel type expert, and his team was quite tricky to figure out offensively, but after some theory crafting, I think I have a good plan. We can't set up here unfortunately because of Dazzling Gleam, but Klefki can't outspeed with offensive moves, only status or hazard moves due to Prankster, so he just goes for spikes before Stab Super Effective Earthquake does him in. In comes Probopass next, and because it has Sturdy, I hit it with Crunch just to break it, then Flash Cannon doesn't do much, allowing us to 4 times damage Earthquake it for the KO. In comes Aegis Slash next, and Earthquake just barely doesn't KO in the red unfortunately, so Iron Head hits us to a third before he Hyper Potions, but from there we can hit two more more consecutively to take him down. His final Pokemon is Scizor, and this is the funny part. I specifically taught Samurai the special flamethrower move just for this reason to take him down, as I knew we wouldn't be in range of a bullet punch. Up next is Drasna, our dragon type arch nemesis. Yes, she's super effective against us, but I mean, likewise. 
Leading with our second bulkiest dragon, Adam the Dragonite, against her drag algae, I go for Dragon Dance, and then get hit with Dragon Pulse just to about half, but our leftovers help. From there, I can smash her with Dragon Claw, but as I feared, her Poison Point ability activates. Uh oh. From there, we can start sweeping though, as her Altaria and Noivern both get one hit KO'd as well, and in comes her final Pokemon, Dredagon. Now, we have quite low health due to Poison, and she has the Rough Skin ability, but the range does look okay, and we've gotten this far, so I go for it, and yep, we're safe, as the Poison doesn't affect you if you win the battle anyway. Solid. The last Elite Four member is Seabowl, the water expert, and his team actually looks quite scary with things like Intimidate, Dragon Dance, Ice Fang, Gyarados, and Dazzling Gleam Starmie too. This was a ton of theory crafting, and I think there's only one possible solution. We just have to hope we don't get crit. He leads with a Claw Whitzer that has Mega Launcher boosted Dragon Pulse of all things, so I lead with Hydreigon. I go for Work Up right away to raise a special attack, and Dragon Pulse hits and we survive on 47 HP with no crit. Whew. From there, Expert Belt Charge Beam does the job and gets the boost I was hoping for as we just need one throughout the battle. From there, Starmie was an outspeed one hit KO with Stab Super Effective Expert Belt Dark Pulse only because we were right at level 65, which was needed for the speed clutch. Otherwise, four times Super Effective Dazzling Gleam would have ended us. Then, Barbarical fell to another Charge Beam, and of course, with Intimidate not affecting us, four times Damage Charge Beam took care of his Gyarados too for the win. That worked impressively well. It's time. The final battle, the champion of the Kalos region, Diantha, who has a mixed team with some insane threats for us. We've come this far though, can we get a deathless W? There's only one way to find out. Let's do battle. She leads with a Halucha, so we have a perfect answer in the form of Salamence with Intimidate. She hits us with a Poison Jab, and honestly I thought she might go for Flying Press due to my Calcs or Swords Dance to make up for the Intimidate, but I guess not. Then we get a Hone Claws off. Another Poison Jab hits us, and we get up in the air for a fly, which smashes her for the one-hit KO. In comes Aurorus next, and we have Earthquake now for another easy KO. Tyrantrum then suffered the same fate due to a Dragon Claw, and the same went for her Gudra too. This is unbelievable. Gorgeist is of course weak to fly as well, and it goes down in one hit. Wicked. In comes her final Pokemon though, the biggest threat of them all, Gardevoir, and I've gotta admit, I was so focused on the Mega Evolving with Pixelate that I forgot her unmega evolved Gardevoir would have Trace and would not only get Intimidate, but could reflect it back at us because it's technically the switch in. Okay, that is just crazy. There is nothing I can switch into a Mega Gardevoir with 165 base special attack using a 95 power stab dazzling gleam, so I have to go for it. My calcs tell me even after an Intimidate, it's a range to KO, but we just barely don't get it and she smashes us into oblivion, giving us our first death. Ouch. From there, I send in Samurai though, and even after healing, a hyperpowered Earthquake is a one-hit KO. Man oh man, that was an insane sequence at the end. It shows you you're never really 100% prepared for a battle. We did it though. We beat the champion and survived the hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Y with only Dragon types and with only one death. Oh, and the post-game battle with AZ was pretty fun as Baron, the King, and our mascot of our channel went absolutely nuts on him. Oh, hey, wait, no, not you again. Come here, you son of a bitch. I hope you had fun with the run, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next, and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.